This is uh, the usual introduction. Uh, the other extrophy is uh, one in 10,000 uh, live births, uh, up to one in 50,000, uh, with a male to female ratio of 2.3 to 1. The bladder extrophy is a broad spectrum, uh, starting from epispedius, passing through bladder extrophy up to cloacal extrophy. Um, it, uh, it usually uh, uh, presents with urinary tract defects uh, or genital tract defect and musculoskeletal system. And uh, in cloacal extrophy, it affects the spinal tract. Regarding abdomen and genitalia, there is a triangular abdominal wall defect. Uh, a short distance between umbilical and anus and frequent indirect inguinal firmness. Uh, in males, uh, there is the anterior corporeal length, which is uh, shorter with 50%, and the diameter of the anterior corporeal length with 30% is greater. In the female, uh, they have a shorter vagina, which is spaced anteriorly, and a bifid clitoris and a divergent and bone tubes. Regarding the bone defects, there is inferior rotation of the pelvis, uh, 12 and 18% external rotation, and the anterior segment is shortened by 30%. Uh, regarding the, uh, the muscle uh, in the pelvis, the levator is in a position 68% more posterior to the rectum versus 52% in normal subjects. It, is, it can be diagnosed antenatally. There is an absence of uh, blood filling, uh, allocet umbilicus, uh, widening of pubis, and diminutive genitalia. And uh, uh, there is a lower abdominal mass that can be detected with ultrasound. Uh, postnatal management um, usually, the, the parents are panicked, and you should advise them uh, how to protect uh, the patch uh, with patch coverage, usually with the uh, tegador. Uh, you have to do a thorough physical examination and uh, initially do ultrasound to assess the kidneys. There are three main objectives of management. Uh, usually the parents look towards the external genitalia. However, doctors should also look or put the renal function at most importance and how to restore the urinary continence. There are secondary objectives. Uh, these are objectives that we are concerned with as doctors, such as uh, how to minimize the infect infection, decrease uh, risk of renal supply, and the reconstruction of the pelvic floor and creation of neo -embers. The timing, there are two schools uh, around the world uh, when to manage such patients. Uh, traditionally, it was believed that uh, when intervention should be less in the first 72 hours or maybe 48 hours. And there is the delayed uh, school of management, usually around three months. The management depends on the patch size, whether you're gonna do steatomy or not, the morbidity associated with the, such a big operation and the post-operative care. The advantages of managing a such patient in a delayed manner, it eliminates the emergency. And this uh, uh, relieves the, the parents when you say to them, it's not an emergency, we will wait. Uh, this allows uh, more time for the baby to, to promote bonding with his parents. It also reduces the anesthesia risk and it makes uh, a better, or gives the, the, the child a better option uh, for a team to be available as experienced team, which includes anesthesiologist and neurologist, and also some uh, orthopedics uh, to be available at time of close. The advantages of having a, an early intervention is that you can for, perform the closure without osteotomy. And however, it lacks uh, the disadvantage is the lack of the setting and the surgical experience because such an operation uh, demands an experienced surgeon, an experienced uh, team, and a specialized hospital. So uh, sometimes uh, doing the surgery early is not an advantage. It could be a disadvantage. So uh, should we wait? 
Well, uh, in the hospital, we usually wait because a successful primary closure is clearly a critical step in the development of urinary contents and spontaneous boiling, which means the most important operation is this, the first operation for the child. That's why it should be done uh, with, with the most experienced surgeon and at the perfect setting. What about the patch size? Uh, you should only close a good, good patch, uh, good size patches, and sometimes we delay closure for smaller ones, um, and also uh, delay closure in patches which is full of polyps. Sometimes we can remove such polyps during the operation, and uh, also sometimes when we do delayed closure, uh, the patch might have a, a better chance to, to grow a little bit. There is extensive history for trials of closure of bladder extrophy, uh, started in the early 50s and uh, passing through the 70s. However, uh, there are now two popular approaches, the modern stage repair of extrophy and the complete primary repair. The modern stage repair, uh, usually at the age of uh, 48, 72 hours uh, after birth, and we close the bladder and abdominal Effect and it is speed disappear in girls only, and it's usually done with iliac hysterotomies. The stage two is at six to twelve months, is it speed is repair only, and stage three at four to five years old is the blubber neck reconstruction, typically with bilateral urethral implantation, and is performed. The child can participate in a bolding program. What about the bladder? bladder neck reconstruction, the bladder capacity uh, should be at least more than uh, 100 milli, so some people say uh, around 80. Um, the child should express interest of being dry, uh, should have a stable neurodynamics, and uh, should be able to participate in a voided improvement program, which uh, includes a senior nurse, a child-like specialist, and child psychologist. The other uh, modern approach is the complete primary repair, which means that the objective was to minimize the number of operations. And it should, uh, it includes not only closure, uh, not only closure uh, of the bladder, and uh, however, it includes only, it includes the complete penile disassembly. Sometimes it is modified, such as the modified transly, and it's traditionally done at 72 hours and sometimes it's done in a delayed closure manner at three months or more. There are other strategies uh, such as the Kelly repair. This is the standard theory. It's usually a, a closure of the bladder dome and hernia repair at birth. And uh, at three to six uh, months, you do the reconstruction of the proximal urethra with associated sphincteric tissue and penile lengthening and creation of Penoscrotal urethral in both. So, so the standard Kelly is, is, is done in a, in a staged manner. And at the uh, at age of three years, you can do the penoscrotal hypostasis. There are other uh, uh, more or less, uh, less uh, popular approaches, such as uh, the Wurzel approach or uh, a Langen approach. And that is the urethral sigmoidostomy. Uh, which is uh, done by uh, doing like a systemic diversion of the ureters to the rectum. However, it has its problems. It demands a uh, regular follow-up uh, for uh, the rectum for the risk of developing later, later on uh, adenocarcinoma in the rectum. What about our approach in the Cairo University? Uh, whenever there is another bladder patch, we do complete the primary repair, usually after three months, to allow uh, better uh, post operative care and less morbidity for the early, for the neonate. We do tightening of bladder neck. We do not do uh, closure or bladder neck reconstruction at this age. We do comply to complete penile disassembly. However, I believe that this either we leave the distal urethral segment attached to the urethra, or we completely uh, remove, uh, disassemble the kidney. However, we keep the glands attached together. We do not dissect the glands uh, in by house. We do a bilateral anterior enormous at the same setting. 
Uh, usually we we do uh, uh, another follow up. We do follow up in a, uh, up to three months manner uh, or yearly. And uh, traditionally, age of three to four years, we do the bladder neck reconstruction. If the content is, is good, which is very rare, we it's well and good. If it's not, we do we we assess the capacity while avoiding cystogram. Sometimes we do cystoscopy. And if there is a good bladder capacity, we will perform bladder neck reconstruction. If not, we do bladder neck reconstruction augmentation in cystoplasty plus minus metropenol. If there is inadequate bladder patch at the time of presentation, we do sometimes bladder closure only at three months. If there is a very bad patch, sometimes we do only bladder neck closure. And at, oh, again, at the age of three to four, we do bladder neck reconstruction augmentation in cystoplasty plus minus metropenol. What about failed cases? Uh, at the age of, if it's less than three, we do bladder closure only and etiotomy. If age more than three, uh, we do bladder neck reconstruction, augmentation, elucidoplasty, and metric. If we fail to achieve continence, we do bladder neck closure, complete closure, and metric or multi. What about the types of osteotomies? Uh, Osteotomy is uh, it's used in such cases uh, started at the uh, 19th century. However, uh, uh, now uh, more, most centers do the combined anterior enormous osteotomies, posterior elecosteotomy, or anterior osteotomies. When to do osteotomy? It's a, big it's a big debate around the world. Depends on the center and the experience of the center. Uh, usually, if there is uh, the diastasis is uh, around 4.8 centimeter. And it is advised in the classic literature if it is after 72 hours or more than four centimeters on failed repair, uh, it's advised to do stroking. Immobilization postoperatively is very important and critical step in um, management of such patients. There are uh, different types of uh, immobilization. Uh, the worst one is the mummy wrapping. It has uh, inferior results. However, each center chooses its uh, way of immobilization. In Cairo University nowadays, we do it bilateral anterior enormous osteotomy and also or combined anterior enormous osteotomy with a posterior iliac osteotomy at the same incision. And we do prefer the fixation with a pelvic binder after consultation with the orthopedics in our department. Uh, this is study with, with in uh, Cairo University. And it was published in, in 2021. Uh, uh, it was assessment of the anterior stomach, role in respiration of normal pelvic floor anatomy for bladder extirpations using preoperative and postoperative pelvic floor MRI. Uh, our aim of the work was to evaluate the effectiveness of anterior stomach. We uh, the, um, divided the patients in our study into two groups. In one group, we performed osteotomy, and the other, we did not perform osteotomy. And both groups underwent a complete primary repair. Here we can see group A and group B. And group C was age matched. We underwent, we did uh, MRI for all groups, preoperative and postoperative, to compare the results of the MRI and see which group was more uh, approached the normal uh, anatomy. Uh, all of them, as we said, underwent anterior enrollment, osteotomy, and complete primary repair. These are uh, the measurements that were taken, something, something called the, the simplicial pubic diastasis, the anterior angle between the anterior obturator and the levator in eye, pubic angle, iliopring angle, ischial angle, and many measurements were taken. And the results showed that both groups were similar in all measure, measurements except the posterior blood resistance, which is in favor of the certain group, which means that uh, all measurements are the same whether the patient underwent osteotomy or not. However, only the posterior blood neck distance was more uh, no, uh, comparable to the normal uh, patients in group C. In the conclusion of the study, the osteotomy did not have a significant difference on the pelvic floor and did not have a significant role in the restoration of the normal pelvic floor anatomy. Uh, and the repair with osteotomy did not add a significant morbidity. However, operative time was longer in the osteotomy group. Proper closure of the pelvis and power success resulted by pubic approximation or by osteotomy as long as the pelvic bones are mobile, adequate surgical dissection, and proper immobilization and pain management. And 
uh, although the results uh, showed that osteotomy does not make a big difference, uh, still in our uh, center we, we perform osteotomies in most cases because we do not uh, know the future uh, effect of uh, our finding. Uh, which showed that the posterior bladder neck distance was better in the osteotomy group. So we cannot conclude its effect on future uh, continents. And we will perform another study in the future to assess such difference. What about the continents results around the world? The successful primary closure, uh, which we end the definition of cons. There is a debate around the world. It's not a debate, it's uh, how the papers are written. Always there is a problem in how to use the terminology. However, if you use a strict terminology of continence, which means the patient's voids normally per urethra without any CIC, uh, usually the content is very low, around the 20%. What about uh, this uh, after complete primary repair? I need no blood or neck reconstruction. What about the blood or neck reconstruction? If you perform blood or neck reconstruction after uh, primary intervention, uh, uh, they say that there is a continence, uh, it can be increased to 60%. However, it should the bladder capacity should at least be more than 100 milli before repair. Uh, and there are many published results, including our results in 2009, that many complete primary repair require a bladder neck reconstruction reaching up to 50%. What about bladder neck reconstruction? It, it, it can be used in a in, in, um, few patients. If you have a, a, a good blood or neck and cystoscopy after performing blood or neck reconstruction, you can give the patient a trial of the flux or macrophatic injection. It can give, uh, results. Sometimes the results are temporary. What about the augmentation ileocystoplasty? If they have a small blood or neck, uh, I mean, small bladder at assessment of capacity, uh, at less than 80, it's not advised to do bladder neck reconstruction. It should do uh, with it augmentation in cystoplasty. Or sometimes you do augmentation in after, cystoplasty after you do bladder neck reconstruction because you fail to do, uh, to have continence with bladder neck reconstruction alone, it is advised to do augmentation in cystoplasty. There are several types that can be cystoplasty that some some centers do sigmoid cystoplasty, ripoid cystoplasty, mines. However, the most one used is the ileus ilium, which we do use in our center. And uh, usually around the world, it's around the four years old. Uh, we, at, our, at our center, we'll do it a little bit earlier, sometimes at three years. Uh, there is no more risk of for malignancy. Whether to do utrophysical implantation or not, we do utrophysical implantation at our center in when uh, it, it uh, intervenes with doing a proper blood and neck reconstruction. Sometimes some centers do it regularly with blood and neck reconstruction. What about the castorized chondroids, such as the metropolope or the monte iliopsychostomy? When all measures fail, sometimes we think about well, blood and neck closure. And uh, we do with it metropolope. However, is this the continent that we aim for? Of course not, but this is sometimes the, the best results that we can this continent for the child uh, and to live a good lifestyle. Here we can see uh, 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 around the right side, uh, 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 a metrifinal uh, opening. On the left side, this is a female closed. Uh, on the right side, uh, uh, we can see here a very acceptable uh, penis. Uh, of a bladder extricate patient. On the left side, we can see here uh, also a good bladder capacity. Sometimes you can achieve a, a, a very good capacity with only closure, but it's not usually the classic case. Here we can see outside an augmented bladder. Uh, and uh, it, as we can see, there is no reflux in the ureters. How to improve the results? Uh, we advise to do the late closure. We invite the team to perform the surgery. Uh, we push towards more the stotomies, adequate post-operative pain management, and early discharge whenever possible. We usually discharge around um, uh, after one week. Uh, we discharge the patient with the caster, uh, using a caster, uh, the diversion with the post and a supra-pubic. 
and maybe after two weeks or three weeks, we start to remove the ureteric catheters, and then the last thing to be removed is the uh, suprapubic. Uh, sometimes the ureteric catheter falls in the first days, sometimes it falls after one week. I suggest to remove it after one week to maximum to allow discharge, any discharge to be uh, to, to go through the urethra and do not put any obstruction. What about the complications? There are many complications such as blood adhesions, cytocutaneous fistula, loss of urethra or penile skin or loss of gland skin is in extreme cases of dissection. However, we do not see it anymore. Uh, after we modified our treatment a long time ago, we do not, uh, com uh, we do, not do complete penile only with the section of gland penis. We leave the gland penis uh, attached to that. What are the causes of failure? A wound infection, abdominal distension, loss of drainage tubes, lack of a with the white right pubic passes, or improper immobilization. Here, uh, it's a very important paper. It emphasizes the role of anatomic pelvic dissection in successful closure of bladder HCP and aid success. Approximately 80% who had their urogenital diaphragm fibers completely intact and therefore did not have an adequate pelvic dissection during the primary or secondary closure, putting the success of the previous closure at risk. This paper emphasizes the very importance of dissecting the intersynthesial band during the first closure to avoid any uh, failure. What about the management of fistulae post-operative? Uh, sometimes uh, we have problems in management uh, of fistulae. Sometimes it, it closes spontaneously. However, some cases requires aggressive or excess muscle flaps to close. Failed closure. When to close a, a failed case, usually it's advised to you wait up to three to five months post-operative. A failed closure, this is a very important study by the Gerhardt in America, published in the European Urology Focus in 2018. 170 patients uh, underwent complete uh, bladder extra repair, uh, had complete uh, bladder extra repair. Uh, more than one repair following a failed uh, underwent more than one repair following a failed primary closure, of which 166 patients were successfully closed. Median time to successful closure from birth was 12 to 0.9 months. What about the isotomy? 153 of the 170 had more than one isotomy. Of the 200 uh, 215 total isotomies, 60% uh, had a single isotomy, 34% had more than one isotomy, 24% per were performed during the 170 failed primary closure, and 75% during the secondary closure, and 64% during the third closure. Avoiding failure, again, we emphasize the post operative immobilization, judicious use of the isotomy, sub specialty training, adequate post operative pain management. There is a say by Mr. Uh, Dr. Philip Franzley. He says, I challenge anyone to show me a male with bladder execute who can voice normally day and night, ejaculates, and has normal sexual function. What we need in the future to be open minded techniques to do cooperation and teamwork, proper registration and reporting, perseverance and patience with the patients and the doctors, psychological support for the patients rehabilitation of for patients and parents and continuous care. Thank you.